Building your first PC can be one of the most daunting, nerve-wracking experiences, especially for somebody who does all their research and they're really prepared, right? There is no way for you to know what you're doing. You can, you can watch as many YouTube tutorials as you can. You can have as many people give you advice, read as many articles as you want. It doesn't matter because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know if what you're doing is right until you've actually done one. And a lot of you guys are watching this and you're probably like, oh, I built many PCs before. What is this guy talking about? It's so easy to build a PC. You can do it in 40 minutes. Well, harken back to that very first time that you ever built a PC and you had no prior experience. There are a lot of thoughts in your mind, a lot of questioning you do to yourself. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience. I just built this thing. This is a mini, mini ITX that I built uh, for the sit-stand desk because we didn't have a Windows PC at our office. We only had a Mac, even though Lita and I both use PCs as our personal devices at our own uh, respective homes. We decided to build one for the office because, you know, we wait out traffic a lot. Might as well play some games sometimes <laughs> here. Uh, so yeah, we built a PC. That was, this is my first PC that I've ever built. And I went through a whole assortment of problems, little issues, little stupid things I look back on now after I built it. And I'm like, oh man, what the hell was I thinking? And uh, we're gonna talk about that. Building a PC, you have to go from top to bottom. You have to find every specific part, either the, the RAM, the hard drive, the SSDs, you have to compile the proper parts. And this is where it gets a little tricky because it's very divided. You ask veterans who have made many PCs for gaming or um, for their own use, you ask them what their opinions are, what part you should get, what brands you should get, and you get differing opinions. There's a huge difference in opinions, either if it's just GTX or or uh, AMD builds. There's, there's a huge assortment of opinions out there. So it's pretty hard to gauge exactly what you have to do. We asked a lot of people, we did. We talked to um, a bunch of gamers and we basically compiled the opinions together into what I thought was the best build we can do for $500. And so PC Parts Picker helps a lot. Uh, that website, I will link it below. That's probably the most general website. And you can use that website to make sure your parts are compatible with one another. Obviously, they don't have every single part in the world, but they do have a wide variety. Um, so you you can mix and match them to see if it works. And also, you have to check how much your power supply, or what power supply you need, how big of a power supply you need. So the PCPartsPicker.com helps a lot because the list that you compile, it also calculates for you what the power source uh, is going to be required. And so using that website really helped. And that's just, that's the first thing you have to do. You have to pick your parts. And you know, if you have somebody that you know, has built a PC and knows what they're talking about, obviously, it's helpful. Reddit is also very helpful. Right off the bat, when I got all my stuff in from all the online retailers I bought them from, I already encountered an issue because I realized I bought the wrong RAM, I bought the wrong pin number. And um, I had to send it back and I went out to Fry's and actually purchased something similar in the same ballpark in terms of price to keep my build budget at that 500 price point. And right off the bat, I was already freaking out that I bought the wrong parts. And in the back of my mind, everything I was doing, put, inserting everything in here while I was building it, I was like, oh man, is this the right part? Did I buy the right thing? I did so much research, I talked to so many people and they all approved my parts list, my final parts list. And I still was questioning myself whether I was building it correctly because I did order something wrong or it's it's very daunting as a first timer because you could be following all the instructions and it seems like you're doing it right. But when something is not working or something doesn't seem like it's plugged in right, you're questioning yourself because you've never seen it. You've always watched videos or you've heard people talk about how you do it. But until you've done it one time, no matter what you're doing, you're always going to be questioning whether you're doing it right. And until that thing boots for the very first time by your hands, you're not going to know. You're always going to be like, oh man, this thing might not be working. I might have bought the wrong thing. I might have broken the motherboard. I might have fried something here. It's happened. A lot of people have accidentally broken their motherboard when they're inserting the RAM too hard, etc. And 
that's another issue too. Plugging things in with proper strength, like the RAM and the and the uh, GPU, you have to add a little bit of strength to it, right? Everybody says you have to push it in harder in the center, or you have to make sure the RAM snaps in correctly, or the thing's not going to power on. I had that issue. I went hours thinking or researching why it was not booting after I put in everything, and um, I had thought I inserted my new RAM, the, the new RAM I went to Fry's to get the proper one. I thought I inserted it correctly, two slots, right? I, I thought I put it in right. Uh, I did the click and click, and it w still wasn't booting, and I took it off. Everybody was telling me to take it off. Um, I was consulting people on Facebook, uh, Messenger, and uh, my friends who have built PCs, and they were telling me it's, it might be the RAM, you know, it might be a faulty motherboard, it might be your power source is enough. I double-checked everything, and I still couldn't figure out what was going on. And uh, everybody was telling me that the RAM needs to be pressed in, right, down the center. Usually you click it right in the center and it clicks in. So I did that, I did that multiple times. And I realized one, one morning, on Saturday morning, I, I came in on a Saturday because I couldn't sleep on Friday night because I couldn't fix it, I couldn't boot it. I came in on a Saturday and I took it out and I realized I clicked it on the left and I clicked it on the right, but the center didn't click. So I pressed it again in the center. So in essence, my RAM that I chose had to be clicked three times inside. Click, click, click. Whereas a lot of people, a lot of videos I saw online, you just press it down the center and it locks in place. The RAM I chose, maybe it's the way it was built. I needed to do three clicks. I needed to apply force in three directions, which uh, I, I watched a lot of videos. They didn't do that, they just did it right down the center. They always said, put it right down the center. So my point is, even though you see a lot of tutorials and they show you the basic fundamentals, I guess certain situations, you still have to adapt to make something work. You know, you gotta, it's troubleshooting and troubleshooting is very frustrating. You have to be patient. You're gonna be pissed off, you're gonna be annoyed, you're gonna be concerned, you're gonna feel like, oh shoot, I'm wasting money. Um, there was a point where I, I, I told Lita, I called her, I was like, I think I just wasted $500. I should have just bought something. I could have bought a Chromebook Plus there, you know? <laughs> so another Chromebook Plus, right? Um, it, it's just something you have to be patient with. And as a first-time builder, it's very scary because you put so much effort and time and you invest so much of your mentality into doing it and you're so invested in it that you want it to work so badly that you're sometimes you get clouded and so sometimes it might be best after a couple steps just to take a break take a deep breath and uh, recharge and rethink it and try it again try everything try to do everything again there are also a lot of little things that looking back i wasted so much time it took me about maybe 10 hours combined to build this thing. And I know those of you who have built a PC uh, or build PCs all the time, you're probably looking at watching this right now and laughing. And yeah, I, I've la I laughed at myself too, watching the video, recording myself doing this. I was laughing at myself after. But 10 hours, there was a lot of things, I, a lot of time I wasted because I was wondering how to do th certain things. Like, for example, my SSD and my hard drive, right? For this particular build, this mini ITX, this. I call it the snow cube. There's a holder, right? There's a little thing that snaps into place holding the hard drive or the SSD, depending on what you put, or both. I, in my case, I put both of them in there, right? And there's certain ways you have to insert it in. But the tray itself that holds both the hard drive and the SSD, it clips in to the PC on the side, onto the case. The casing clips onto the side. And so um, <laughs> I spent so long trying to pop that damn tray back into the PC case. And I could not do it. I, it was like a puzzle, right? There's these little little um, panels that are cut out for it to fit in, right? So I always thought, okay, I gotta slide it in this way or I gotta slide it in here and pop it in, right? How come it's not popping in? It's not going in, it's not fitting in. Why is it not fitting in? I pulled it out from here. Why is it not popping in? And I spent like a good 40 minutes trying and trying and pushing and shoving and sliding in all configurations to see how it goes in it still wouldn't pop into place and i was freaking the hell 
out. I was searching online for this build model for just things in general. Like, did I break it? Did I miss something? Did I maybe like warp something? And then, I don't even know how this came about, but I just decided to lift the PC casing, the bar, a little higher, I, you, physically using force to lift the PC case and slide the little notch on the um, hard drive case under it. And it locked into place. That's all I had to freaking do. Lift the rim here a little bit with my thumb and just slide it under. It's as simple as that. It's like if you're making your bed and you're lifting the bed sheets up to tuck in the cloth. It's, it's, I can't believe that was all it took. It took me 40 minutes struggling, trying to do Tetris here, trying to fit it in. All I had to do was just look up the tab and slide it under. That's all I had to do. And, you know, so as a first time PC builder, I didn't know that. I really didn't. I've never built a PC before and not, I'm actually not that handy. <laughs> and I never thought about buying some, uh, buying something to build, you know? If I can buy something already built, why do I need to build it myself, right? Why go through that trouble? That's why you work so hard to make money. So you don't have to go through all that trouble. But there is something very satisfying about building your own PC. And after I built this thing, I can't tell you how relieved I was when this thing booted. Like I was saying, I, I plugged in the RAM wrong and or the RAM wasn't snapped in fully, so it wasn't booting, right? The fans were running, but the dang thing wasn't booting. And so I was stressing out and that spent, I spent another few hours trying to figure that out. And when I finally solved it and it booted to BIOS, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how relieved I was, how proud I was. <laughs> I know it's, uh, it's pretty embarrassing, but I was really darn proud of myself that it booted to BIOS. And I'm not, I'm not even ashamed of that. That's just the way it is, you know? You put in so much effort and so much time and research and to make something that actually works, I, it's the best feeling in the world. It really is. And you know what? You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Because now, if you wanted me to build another PC tomorrow, I could do it in a quarter of the time because I know where everything goes. I know where everything plugs into the motherboard now. Uh, whereas before it took me maybe like 20 minutes for each particular thing to plug in because I was double checking and triple checking online and also on the manuals to make sure I was playing in the right place. But now I fundamentally know where everything goes because I put in all that effort the first time in and it's going to be so much easier for me to build a PC. Obviously no two PCs are the same in terms of their build um, unless you buy the same stuff. But, <laughs> but the next PC is gonna be so much easier for me to build. And my point is, if you're on the on your rock on the rocks and really nervous about building your first PC, you're just like me. I was like that too. And I'm sure everybody who's ever built a PC was like that the first time. And even if they say they weren't, they probably questioned it themselves at some point or another. You know, it's just the way it is on your first time. So my best advice for people who are curious about building their first PC or who have always wanted to, but never thought they could because they weren't very handy or very, I'm very clumsy too. If you're very clumsy, look, if I can do it, you can do it. So hopefully this helped. Let me know uh, if you guys want me to talk more about the PC. Um, it's freshly built, so I still have that in mind. If you guys are having any troubles, uh, maybe you, you guys can help each other down in the comments section, building a PC and stuff. If you want me to do more PC stuff, I've actually been wanting to uh, invite some esports um, competitors and also uh, PC serious hardcore gamers onto the channel to build PCs for me, um, for the channel. And uh, I've been in talks with a few of them in this process and they're interested. So uh, we might be doing a lot more PC stuff because Lita and I want to expand our, our range for this tech channel. So thanks again, my name is Alex from Set Note Tech. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell button below so that you don't miss a single video in the future. I'll see you guys next time, bye!